Well, here I am in the Arizona desert, somewhere near Florence, actually, which is southeast of Phoenix. This is my first bit of footage from the Foresight MK1S with its awesome camera. This should be filmed at 60 frames per second, which is the higher option. And here I am out here on this uh, 2005 BMW R1200 ST, which is, I'm told, a rare bike. It was only made a couple of years, according to the owner. I'll have to verify that. It's an air-cooled boxer engine. You can see them jug sticking out down there, maybe. And you can see my fancy for Foresight controller mount here, which uh, I didn't get the handlebar mount with the helmet, and so my impromptu mount is this uh, webbing from a, a tool that my wife found in a dollar store. I don't think I could have mounted it very well here anyway on the bars on this setup, so this is about as good as it gets. We got uh, a crazy rainstorm to the north here. You can see these black clouds. I just found the sunshine by riding through all that to the south. And uh, I enjoyed being dry for a little while, but I think I'm going back into the rain again when I go to return this bike. I want to thank Twisted Road for supplying the rental. This has been a lot of fun. It's it's an odd sort of motorcycle. I mean, it's got this massive boxer engine stuffed into sort of a sport tour frame, but it's not really fast enough to be a true sport tour. It's and it's not really toury enough to be a touring bike. So it doesn't know what it is, or it's a sportish tour, if you will. I, I kind of imagine this being a bit like what the new Moto Guzzi B100 Mandelo will handle like. Oh yeah, that looks like that's a really nasty cloud. And I bet that's exactly where I have to go. I'm on the road to Gold Canyon right now. So, getting back to the Foresight helmet, it's it's been a learning curve because this isn't a Cardo system and it's not a Senna system. It's not anything that I'm really familiar with. So there's a, a bit of a a bit of a awkward situation happening where I think it should be doing something, but it's a little hard to get to do it at times. But I, I think I have figured out now about the only thing I'm still sort of fighting with it over is how to summon Siri to make a phone call. But the navigation has worked quite well. I, I give the navigation pretty high scores. And the LED monitor, which this camera won't show, has worked quite well. In bright sunlight, I don't notice it even with the internal sun visor lowered. But when it gets less sunny, say like it is now, I see it really well. And, uh, and at night it was absolutely a godsend. So I think it's too early in the review to, to make a whole lot of uh, points about it yet. But I'll say this, as far as loudness goes it's an average helmet I would say on on the maybe the louder side of average like uh, it, it's it's quietest if you tip your head in sort of the sport mode into the oncoming wind I don't know if you can hear it when I stand up it's noisier like this than it is like this so sport bike riders will like it and I think that it was the goal in the designs to give it a sporty styling and uh, the visor is good the, the uh, pin lock works pretty good I did manage to fog it up in the worst rain encountered this morning but that's normal any helmet will do that the internal sun visor fogs up 
when I breathe heavy on it in cooler weather like I've got now. The, uh, the fit is good. I, it's really good for my round oval head. I'm at the top end of the size medium and I just get in it. I, the front part of the helmet creates a slight pressure point for me, which is very unusual for someone with a round oval head. So people with longer shaped heads, like long oval or, or even a longer intermediate oval, might find that annoying and unfortunately there's not much there's no adjustment actually in the crown liner on this but you can swap in different thicknesses of padding according to my friends at Foresight. Uh, the battery life is is pretty good so far I, I've been using the camera oh maybe five minutes now and I've been using the navigation all morning so several hours I'm still not below 70% battery. So it looks like it's gonna last pretty good. It should last all day. The controller battery is even better. It will definitely last all day based on consumption so far. I did manage to put some light scratches in the visor just from wiping the rain away this morning and the road grime. I would say it's about average for scratch resistance on the visor. It's uh, it's very lightweight, like I don't notice it on my head and it doesn't move around. I, I think it's a good helmet, like everything I've, I've experienced so far makes me like it. Uh, except for the warning system that it's got is, is just really not working for me. I'm getting some warnings for police and construction, but it's usually, but it's usually after the fact. Like I passed a, a police officer had pulled over a big truck and it alerted me about it, but only 20, 30 seconds down the road. And then about a minute or two down the road from that, it told me there was a vehicle pulled over and it missed two other police officers that were parked. Uh, it, it actually gave me some false alarms. I was supposed to turn there. I'm too busy talking. I'll have to turn around. Maybe I'll just pull over. Oh, there's some cool cactus over here, though. But, uh, yeah, it's been warning me about all kinds of vehicles pulled over and hazards in the road that really haven't materialized. And sometimes I think they're on the other side of the road, but I'm not, and sometimes I think they're just old reports that it's noticing and notifying me about. So I don't think you can really rely on it. Not reliably, anyway. At any rate, it's still a good helmet that I'm enjoying quite a bit, and I'm really enjoying Arizona. If the weather would just cooperate a little better, this would be outstanding. So I push this button here to stop recording.